Hi there. After this lesson, you should be able to classify equations in one variable as having one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Let's jump right into an example. This is just an ordinary equation that we will easily solve. First, I will subtract 2x from both sides to get 2x minus 15 equal to 1. Then I add 15 to both sides to get 2x equal to 16. I must divide both sides by 2 to get x equal to 8. I see that there is one solution that would make this statement true, and that solution is 8. Let's take a look at another example. It appears to be an ordinary equation. Let's go ahead and solve. I will subtract 7x on both sides to get 2 equal to 5. However, I know that 2 does not equal 5. Therefore, there is no solution to this equation. There is no number I could plug into x to get a true statement. All right, let's try one more. I will try to solve this equation for x. I will first subtract 12 from both sides to get negative 4x equal to negative 4x. Then, I will divide both sides by negative 4 to get x equal to x. Hmm, what can this mean? Well, it means that x could be any number. I could plug in any number for x and end up with a true statement. For example, if I let x equal 4, I get negative 16 plus 12 equal to negative 16 plus 12, which is equal to negative 4 equal to negative 4. This is a true statement. If I let x equal to 1, I get negative 4 plus 12 equal to, to negative 4 plus 12. This is equal to 8 equal to 8. This is a true statement. Or if I let x equal negative 3, I get 12 plus 12 equal 12 plus 12 which is equal to 24 equal to 24. This is also a true statement. So you can see, I can choose any number and get a true statement. Therefore, there are an infinite number of solutions. Let's recap. Take a look at example one again. If there is one number that x is equal to, then there is only one solution. Take a look at example two. If you arrive at an untrue statement, then there are no solutions. And lastly, if you arrive at an answer, we're taking a look at example three, an answer to which both sides of the equation are the same, then there are an infinite number of solutions. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret there's a shortcut. Don't get me wrong, you can always solve completely, but when in doubt, that is the best method. However, instead of solving completely every time, we can look at the general form of an equation. That general form is ax plus b equal to c, and in particular, we are going to be paying close attention to the expression ax plus b. You will see this form pop up on both sides of the equations we are working with. So let's take a look at our previous examples. Go ahead and take a look at our last example, example three. We see ax plus b on both sides of the equation where a is the coefficient of x and b is the constant. What do you notice about the coefficients and constants on either side? We see that the coefficients are both negative 4. We can note that they are the same. And the constants are both 12. We can note that they are also the same. Whenever you encounter an equation where the coefficients and constants are the same on both sides, you can conclude that the equation has infinite many solutions. Let's go back and look at example 2. We also want to compare coefficients and constants. First, let's use the commutative property to do some rearranging so that we can easily see the general form ax plus b. Good, okay, the coefficients of x are the same. They are both seven, and the constants are different. 
every time you encounter an equation with these results, you can conclude that the equation has no solution. Okay, now jump back to example one. For an equation with one solution, we are only concerned with the coefficient. Unlike the other two outcomes, any equation with different coefficients will have only one solution, no matter whether the constants are the same or different. Okay, now it's your turn. You can solve completely or use the shortcut method, but try your best to classify each equation as having one solution, no solution, or infinite number of solutions. Okay, for problem A, I see that each side of the equation has the same coefficient, but different constants. Therefore, the equation has no solution. In problem B, you'll notice it needs a little bit of simplifying to get both sides in the form that we want it in, ax plus b. So I will combine these terms to get 4x minus 5 equal to 4x minus 5. There, now I can see that they have the same coefficient and the same constant. Therefore, there are an infinite number of solutions. And lastly, in problem C, I will simplify by using the distributive property. 2 times 4y is equal to 8y, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2. I will copy down the rest of the problem. I now see that the expressions on either side have different coefficients, and therefore, they only have one solution. Great job! Mm -hmm.